In this video, we are going to explore the various components of a main engine and the shafting arrangement used for propulsion. The main engine is a two-stroke internal combustion engine. This is the bed plate. It is the bottommost part of the engine on which the other parts are resting. The bed plate is made of two parallel girders running across the length of the engine. They are called longitudinal girders. They are connected with girders running across in transverse direction. They are called transverse girders. The transverse girders are positioned on either side of the crank throw of the crankshaft. A bearing support made of cast steel are embedded on these transverse girders to support the crankshaft. This is the A-frame. It is a fabricated structure mounted on top of the bed plate. It carries the crosshead guides. It accommodates the crankcase doors. And the crankcase relief valves. It also supports the cylinder block. The cylinder block is also called as entablature. The under piston scavenge lube oil is drained by these pipes to scavenge box lube oil drain tank. The stuffing box lube oil is drained by these pipes to stuffing box lube oil drain tank. The piston cooling oil enters into the cylinder block through these pipes. The cylinder block accommodates the liner inside. This is the liner which provides the combustion chamber. The liner is a metal cylinder inserted inside the cylinder block from top and secured at the top by cylinder head. A space is provided surrounding the liner for circulation of cooling water. The liner accommodates the lubricating quills in its circumference for injecting the lube oil for cylinder lubrication through non-return valves. The cylinder oil lubricating quills inject cylinder lube oil at timed intervals during the upward movement of the piston. The liner is free to expand downward when subjected to heating. Scavenge ports are provided at the lower parts of the liner for the air to enter into the combustion chamber from the scavenge manifold. O-rings are fitted surrounding the liner below the cooling water space to prevent water leaking into the scavenge space. The stuffing box is provided below the under piston scavenge space in the diaphragm, separating the scavenge space from the crankcase. The cylinder head rests on the liner and is secured with the cylinder block using nuts and studs. The tie bolts keep the bed plate, the A-frame, and the cylinder block together. The cylinder head accommodates exhaust valve at the center. The exhaust gas discharge from the exhaust valve enters the expansion bellow and reaches the exhaust manifold. The exhaust valve is opened by the hydraulic oil pressure developed by the hydraulic pump. Driven by the camshaft, the valve is closed by air spring. The camshaft also operates a fuel pump, which produces high pressure fuel oil to be injected through the fuel injectors, which are mounted on the cylinder head. The cylinder head also accommodates a starting air valve. The starting air valve is opened by the pilot air, which is supplied in sequence to various units, as per the firing order from the air distributor. The air distributor is operated by the camshaft. The cylinder head also accommodates indicator cock. This is used for blowing through function before starting the engine and also to get the parameters such as peak pressure, compression pressure, scavenge pressure and combustion characteristics by fitting indicating instruments onto it. The relief valve fitted on the cylinder head opens and releases the abnormally high pressure generated inside the combustion chamber in a fault condition. The turbocharger helps in increasing the power output of the same engine by supplying air under pressure for combustion. It consists of two main parts, a compressor and a turbine. Both the compressor impeller and the turbine wheel are mounted on the same shaft separated by labyrinth and gland seals. The turbine wheel is rotated by the energy of the exhaust gas taken from the exhaust manifold. A compressor impeller fitted on the other side of the turbine shaft draws air from the engine room through a filter, compresses it, and sends it to the air cooler. 
After cooling, the air enters the scavenge manifold to enter the cylinder through the scavenge ports. The auxiliary blowers are fitted at the ends of the scavenge manifold to supply additional air at low engine speeds, as the air supplied by the turbocharger is insufficient at low speeds of the engine. The exhaust gases leaving the turbocharger is made to flow through the economizer to recover the waste heat contained in the exhaust gas. After the waste heat recovery process, the exhaust gases are left out to the atmosphere through the chimney. The piston is a composite structure with crown and skirt. Piston crown is subjected to fluctuating thermal and mechanical stresses. It transfers the combustion force to the piston rod. The piston crown has four chromium-plated grooves to accommodate the piston rings. The piston rings provide sealing of combustion chamber, preventing the leakage of the combustion gases into the under piston spaces. Piston rods help in transmitting the power produced in the combustion space to the cross head. The top end of the rod is attached to the underside of the piston and the bottom end is connected to the cross head pin. The piston rod passes through the stuffing box. For cooling of the piston, a telescopic pipe fitted to the cross head supplies oil. The heated oil from the piston is discharged to the crankcase by another pipe from the cross head. The piston rod is provided with a passage at the center and a concentric passage surrounding the center passage for the supply and return of piston cooling oil. The cross head connects the piston rod to the connecting rod. It helps in eliminating side thrust on the piston. The piston rod is attached to the top side of the cross head pin. The top end of the connecting rod having a cross head bearing is connected to the cross head pin. Inside of the cross head guides, the cross head slides with shoes which are lined with white metal. The connecting rod is fitted in between the cross head and the crank bin of the crankshaft. They are shaped at both the ends to accommodate bearings. The connecting rod oscillates and transforms the reciprocating motion of a piston into rotary motion of crankshaft. The crank bin is fitted between the crank webs. The crankshaft is a key component of an engine transmitting cylinder power to the propeller shaft. It converts the oscillating motion of connecting rod to rotatory motion of the shaft. The crankshaft is supported on the main bearings, which are located on the transverse girders of the bed plate. The mechanical power transmission from crankshaft to camshaft is carried out in chain case. The chain drives give more flexibility in location of the camshaft, as well as ease of repair replacement of parts at a lower cost. The chain runs over the sprocket's wheel fitted on the crankshaft, the idler sprocket wheel which is provided to adjust the tension of the chain, and on the sprocket wheel fitted on the camshaft. The camshaft is supported by white metal bearings at many places. Two cams are fitted for each unit on the camshaft, one for operating the fuel pump, and another for operating the hydraulic pump that actuates the exhaust valve. Each cam profile is designed to produce desired speed and lift of the follower at appropriate time. The camshaft also operates the air distributor. The lubricating oil for the camshaft bearings, the cams, the cam followers, and the operating oil for the exhaust valve are provided by a separate camshaft lubrication system. The camshaft also drives a cylinder lubricator to inject cylinder lube oil at timed intervals through the lubricating quills. The thrust bearing is located in the aft side of the main engine to transmit the propeller thrust from the shafting to the hull structure. The thrust bearing consists of a thrust collar on the thrust shaft and thrust pads. The propeller thrust is transferred through the thrust collar, the thrust pads, the thrust bearing housing, the fitted bolts, the foundation, to the hull structure. The turning gear is a reversible electric motor and a set of gearing arrangement which can be engaged with the toothed flywheel fitted on the crankshaft. This arrangement helps in turning the crankshaft slowly enabling the maintenance of the engine. The turning gear is also used to turn the engine one or two revolutions prior to starting for manually lubricating the liner surface. This turning also helps in ensuring that the engine is free to turn and that no water has collected in the cylinders. Intermediate shaft links the propeller shaft to the thrust shaft. Intermediate shaft bearings support the intermediate shaft. 
The tail shaft, which is attached to the intermediate shaft, passes through the stern tube, which is a hollow tube provided at the lower stern part of the ship. The stern tube bearing supports the propeller shaft. Stern tube also accommodates the seals at the forward and aft portions to prevent the seawater entry into the stern tube and the leakage of stern tube lubricating oil to outside. The propeller is fitted at the end of the propeller shaft. The rudder fitted in the water stream created by propeller helps in achieving a desired course of the ship. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more educational content.